Hello, everyone, and welcome to the benefits of Clown and Play with Shannon Calcutt and Noah Bremer. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Darren Petura, and I am founder and director of Vegas Theatre Hub, Las Vegas' creative playground. Uh, we are currently offering online classes in the performing arts and writing and are excited to have you joining us here today, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or perhaps you're on Periscope or the Twitters. Uh, we have an upcoming class starting in March called Virtual Playground. It's a clown class uh, taught by Shannon Calcutt, and that has led to this discussion we are having here today. Uh, the class occurs uh, every Saturday, uh, so that's four Saturdays in March, and that's 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, so you can uh, convert that time zone for wherever you are. Uh, I'll be putting more information uh, in the chat. Um, speaking of the chat, uh, this stream is gonna be interactive. So uh, please feel free, uh, no matter how you're watching us, to uh, participate in that chat, and then I will be fielding your questions uh, to Shannon and uh, to Noah. Um, so without further ado, how about we uh, send in the clowns? Ladies and gentlemen, first up, uh, please welcome, uh, we have Noah Bremer. Uh, he's a highly respected actor, director, and educator. Uh, Noah is co-founding member of producing artistic and award uh, and uh, of award-winning innovative physical theater company, Live Action Set. While also currently performing in Cirque du Soleil's Beatles Love, playing the role of Father Mackenzie. Thank you so much for being here, Noah. Thanks for having me. Yes, and also we have joining us is Shannon Calcutt. Shannon Calcutt is one of the world's leading instructors in clown and play, a multi-award winning performer and instructor. She has conducted workshops worldwide. Calcutt has performed for millions of spectators as a lead clown in Cirque du Soleil's Zumanity. She is also comic act designer and acting coach for Cirque du Soleil and Berlin's Frederikstadt Platz, the world's biggest theater stage. Please welcome Shannon Calcutt, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here, Shannon. All right. Well, have fun. Let's get to it. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, Darren. Hi, Noah. Hey, Shannon, how are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm great. You look fantastic. You look fantastic. <laughs> the glasses, oh my gosh. Remember when we were chatting a long time ago about creating a podcast where we would do like clowns in COVID having coffee? I, re I remember. And now we're kind of doing it? Cheers. Hey, so, um, so you've been teaching some online classes and um, and you used to teach a lot of only live classes. So this new, this thing is like very new of doing uh, online interactive things. And you, what I was really impressed by taking your workshop is that you totally transformed the live stuff to work online. And I was thinking, how, what was your process for doing that? Um, it was sort of this feeling, a lot of people were asking, well, for years, people have asked me to teach online. And I always thought, are you nuts? <laughs> you know, we need an audience. We need to be in the studio. That's clown, right? Um, and then, of course, this happened. This pandemic happened. And, and then I thought, okay, well, clowns make the impossible possible. So just be a clown, you know? And then, yeah, I've been teaching 20 well, years. So, uh, you know, feeling vulnerable as an instructor to go, okay, those exercises that you know, 30 wow. different ways they could go. <laughs> you can't do those in this form, wow. right? So it's actually been really rewarding and it works. I mean, that's the great news, it works. And I didn't expect it to, um, but there's, a, there's actually a different level of intimacy, right? Because you get to see into people's houses. So, um, you know, in the studio, you're working with me and you can think, oh, she's so organized or whatever. And then, well, now when you see me in my home, you go, oh, she's not at all. <laughs> Right. And so it was just sort of how can we play in this environment? So like the game a Three Strikes You're Out, for example, it's like, how can we use our homes? So in this game, um, somebody will say in my house, I have a toaster and then everyone has to run and get a toaster and bring it back as fast as they can. So you're playing in your home. Do you know? And then uh, when we're working and creating uh, bids and, and material, you in the studio are like, oh, I wish I had that costume. Oh, I wish I had that hat. Oh, I wish I had that prop. Well, now you do, right? So in some ways you've got more to work with. And, um, 
and, and you can share in a different way. So it's just figuring out how to use this medium. Um, and it's been really fun. Hmm. Yeah. I've, I've, I've loved it. I've always just been like, I, at first I was a little nervous to let people kind of see into my home. Yeah. And then after a little while, I realized it was, wait, this is, I know this place, like, so I can use it. And then I, because you were challenging me to do different things that I would ever do in my home, I started seeing my own space in a different way. Right. And yeah. thought, oh, I've never hidden behind my curtains before. <laughs> Right, as I remember that, what a great entrance it was, and how we can all see you, right? right. And they think they're hiding. Do you know what I mean? We see your feet, right? Um, and the beauty in that, and the stupidity in that, right? And so I think after the class too, it's like, yeah, we're stuck in our homes right now. So now you've experienced your home in a different way, and maybe you can't. Um, you know, afford to paint your living room or you you can't, you don't feel safe going to a, a cafe maybe. Um, so you've sort of had this new experience in your house. Do you know what I mean? And you've, yeah, you've hid behind your curtains. I, I remember one um, student said, it's the first time I've had my bicycle in my bedroom, <laughs> you know, and just having this pile of stuff that you used, having to put it back. It's like things, there's movement in your home. Do you know what I mean? Which is kind of nice right now. Do you, this is changing the subject a little bit, but and kind of going back in a, in a way, because I feel like a lot of people say like, oh, I, I don't know what clowning is, or I don't, what is clown? And not, I mean, you could we, could, we could talk for hours about what is clown, but the differences between that and between acting, and I know a lot of people, different types of people have taken your workshops, um, actors, clowns, lawyers, doctors, like, but I think there's something at the core of what this work is that goes beyond a name, um, but yet names are important. So maybe can you kind of share your thoughts on what this work really is, what it gets at? I think it just, this work is, it's play, right? Mm -hmm. it, just, it comes down to play and we can all play. You know what I mean? And we can get heady and academic and we can talk about acting and, and, and clown and, but the fact is we can all pretend, right? Like we can just pretend right now to be wildly successful <laughs> or we can pretend to be dragons, right? We, we don't have to study to learn how to do that. We can just pretend and that's what kids do. Um, and so it's just getting out of your way. And clown is the quickest way to get out of the way, right? Because we get out of our heads and we play from our hearts and we're in the moment. And so there's no sense of fear in the moment, right? Um, in my classes, you take an oath, uh, you, which is agreed stupidity, right? We agree to take the ridiculousness seriously, which is what kids do on the playground, right? They take the play incredibly seriously. Um, we agree to make each other look good. So it's not about me. I, I'm here to make you look good. So immediately it's like, oh, and you say, I'm here to make you look good, Shannon. And I think, oh, thank God, I don't have to worry anymore. <laughs> do you know? So you're in this, this place where I've got your back. I'm gonna say yes to your dumb ideas. So every idea we agree will be dumb and we'll say yes to it. So it's just um, taking away the fear and just being present in the moment. If you're present in this moment, if you're vulnerable, if you're playing from your heart, you're a clown, right? If you're letting the audience or our, our, our participants in the class, if we're letting them see our most authentic true selves and, and they're allowing us to see them or to reflect how we're feeling, we're in clown, do you know? If you are um, experiencing all of the emotions with joy, right? I remember when you were talking a while ago about Father Mackenzie, right? And you have to be grumpy, you have to be angry and how it was kind of like getting you down a bit, you know? And then you found the joy in being angry. That's how you know you're in clown. Right. If you're if you're having a temper tantrum and you're having complete joy, <laughs> if you're absolutely depressed and praying for death and you're having complete joy doing that, you're in clown. We experience joy in every emotion. Right. And we laugh in failure space. We flaunt our flaws so the audience can forget their own. So that's where the clown lives. And just to experience that joy, that spontaneity, um, of being present with one another and having that connection, um, that to me is the foundation of the work. Um, 
and and I use it in everything I do as an actor, as a writer, just playing from that place of of joy and fun. And who gives a fuck if I fail? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like the rest of the world is worried about me failing. I shouldn't be worried too. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I'll try it. And and if I fall on my face, great. I trust someone will help me up. You know. That gets a lot to the the idea of the critic. Yeah. And just really. You, you talk about that. A lot of this clown talks about that and, and different styles kind of approach it in different ways. Um, my theory on the negative style of teaching is that the teacher then becomes the worst voice in the room. Like they're gonna be so mean to you uh, that they are the voice of the audience. We say, would you rather watch him or would you rather uh, eat a moldy cat food? You know, and, and the audience is like, well, I guess I'd rather eat the cat food because you have to be honest and because you're, you're, you're faking it, right? And then you're just calling you out. But it hurts because it hurts. It's an insult. But it also becomes like a, 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 coat, a cloak of armor. But you don't teach that way, which I'm grateful for. Um, although you'll tell me like not to have a sandwich in a charming way, like, you know, get off your ass and work. Or you're hiding, like you'll call me out, which I of course need. But um, this idea of kicking the critic to the curb, and just as much as the oath is so important to say out loud, it's so important to really visualize that critic, crush it, and put it away, or just say like, "Oh, thanks for showing up, critic. I appreciate your feedback. Now go away." Yeah, but absolutely. That's just it. I mean, I think I started doing that oath. I was trying to think when I started doing that and I think it's when I started working with all the Cirque du Soleil artists and because they were acrobats and aerialists they had to be perfect their whole career was built on perfection right so now is a chance to be imperfect um and to encourage that you know and and the whole critic that voice in our heads like I mean I will say in class you know was he awful or was he you know is it amazing or is it awful kind of thing um, but you know, Golier is great for saying, you know, for, I mean, Golier taught me how to be a better teacher because if you're going to, if you want to suffer, there's the room to go to. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, and, he, and I, I, I love Golier, but yeah, if he has 30 students, one will leave feeling wonderful. Right. Oh. Um, so it's that sense, the critic, the inner critic that we all have it. And especially now I've been teaching works, writing workshops and every student, uh, it's confidence, right? It's just embedding confidence and the critic, you know, we do that exercise where you visualize the critic on your shoulder and uh, you know, I'll say, you know, what does it, is it a piece of shit, right? Is it, does it smell like shit? Is it a parakeet and you can't stand the sound of the chirping? Um, is it an ugly troll doll? Is it, a, a, you know, a feathers and you're allergic to feathers? What is it, right? And we walk around the room and it's on our shoulder. It gets heavier and heavier till it falls off and then we kill it. Mm -hmm. And because it's a clown workshop, you kill it with great joy. You chop it up in a million pieces. You put it in the toaster, it pops up. Oh, it's together again. You you bury it. Oh, it's, you walk around. Oh no, I still hear it. You, you, you dig it up, you know, you do all these things. You turn it into string cheese, whatever it is, you know, you destroy it. And then of course people walk around the room and they they feel lighter. And I remember one student, uh, Nate, who was beautiful um, master students at the university here, and he was really struggling and everyone had completed it and he was still there. And there was a fire, it was clear he was sitting on a fire and without people talking that you, they were bringing wood for the fire. And now they were roasting marshmallows over the fire of his asshole critic, do you know what I mean? And there was no communication. It's just was this communal effort to, for him to shine. And he was weeping and, and everyone else was weeping you know, and nobody knew who his critic was, right? Is it his mom? Is it his dad? Is it his gym teacher? There's no talk, right? It's therapeutic, <laughs> but it's not therapy. There's no sharing. It's just seeing someone in a fucking mess and helping them and, and just having that experience. And I remember working with, uh, you know, people will say, oh, I didn't, I, I just don't feel right about destroying it, you know, because it's a part of me. And of course, it's a part of you. It's that voice you hear in the morning when you wake up and the voice at night. And yeah, I just, I didn't want to destroy it. I felt guilty. And I think for God's sake, you didn't destroy it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You didn't really just, you know, put it in the toaster and, you know, we're not on some crime investigative series here, but people are so attached to that shit 
storm of a critic. And so of course it's just, it's just recognizing it's there and kicking it off the shoulder and just saying, I hear you. I know you're trying to protect me. You don't want me to look stupid. You don't want me to take this risk, but I'm willing to do it and I'm willing to look stupid. Do you know what I mean? And, and just, just acknowledging it. I mean, that's the other thing about clowns. We acknowledge everything, right? We, we acknowledge when we're in the shit. We acknowledge we're stupid. We don't deny ourselves this experience. So yeah, I, I think that exercise is so valuable and just, just fun because that, that voice is always going to pop up and it's there to protect us, but you don't want it to limit you from being wonderful, right? right. And taking risks. Yeah, especially now, I mean, myself and so many people I've talked to are just questioning everything, you know, especially in the performing arts where, you know, a lot of our jobs are on hold. It was so funny when Darren read the bio, which I clearly wrote, but like <laughs> where it's like currently performing, it's like I haven't currently performed much of anything lately. I, know, I think it still says on my website, you can see her uh, taping her tits at Cirque du Soleil's Humanity. Well, that ship has sailed. <laughs> kind of mentioned that um, Roxanne had a, a question talking about how the work seems very uh, therapeutic yeah. and and have you ever had people take the class for purely therapeutic reasons? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for sure. I believe everyone should take a clown workshop, right? Whether you want to be a comedian or a doctor or whatever. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it, it just helps you. You have to face yourself, right? Richard Pachenko um, created an art form clown through mask. And I was lucky to work with Jan Henderson who's um, worked with Richard for many years and was very close with Richard. And his whole idea was to face yourself from all directions at once, right? So if that was North, South, East, West, above and below. And when you actually, look at yourself, you're forced to see your ridiculousness, your animalness, your humanness, and you need to celebrate it, right? And so you flaunt your flaws, right? And you, it's absolute self-acceptance, you know? And so uh, even in Zoomanity, do you know, I, I wrote a show with Sue Morrison called Out of My Skin in early 2001, I think I wrote it. And uh, in real life, my car was broken into, so they stole my wedding dress and that's what my clown wore. So many women had brought me wedding dresses to my shows over the years when I toured. So I have, I mean, I have 20 wedding dresses in a hockey bag in my garage. I'm Canadian. And that's where we keep our wedding dresses. But you know, I was topless in the show. I made a breast implant routine. I was trying to be sexy. That was the way to be sexy. So I didn't think anything of it. And then that's the act that Cirque wanted in Zumanity. So I'm doing this act. My body's changing over the years. Um, I used to drop my top. I got a huge round of applause. <laughs> uh, then I had a daughter, you know, and I nursed and I had to pump before every act and I wasn't getting this applause. So they had a plant in the audience whistle. Well, okay. And then that artist was no longer in the show. <laughs> so then I had my son and I dropped my top and it was like crickets, do you know? And I thought, what's going on? And I did this big move with my arms and I did it at home in my bathroom and my tits disappeared. And I looked at my husband, I said, I don't have any tips. Why didn't you tell me, do you know? And so I made a magic act in, in, in the show. I'd say, okay, you keep your eyes on my tits, you know? And I would wear my top, they're big, they're big, drop it, they're small. Then I'd make them disappear. I'd run around the stage screaming, you know? And, you know, I could have gone to a therapist Right. And I could have said, yeah, you know, I, I wrote this in my 20s. I'm in my 40s. And God, my tits aren't what they used to be. And I, I don't feel good about my my appearance. Do you know what I mean? I could have put sticky notes on my mirror. You're beautiful. <laughs> you know, whatever. And read them every day. I, you know, I could have gone to uh, talk to other women in their 40s. What? ever i i just recognized how how i looked and i made a joke at my own expense i mean my humor has always been self-deprecating but it's the was the biggest laugh in the act you know because women in the audience went oh god it's happened to me too and their husbands and partners went oh yeah i've been with her for 30 years and witnessed her body changing and so it was a celebration of these are my 45 year old i've nursed two baby tits do you know what I mean? and so Again, I don't have to go, I don't have to go, oh man, it's just a celebration. Yeah. This is how my body looks now. Um, and owning that, do you know? And I hope when I'm 90, uh, I'm still making a fool of myself mm -hmm. and enjoying it. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? So it's wildly therapeutic, but it's not therapy in the sense that you don't have to talk about your shit. You just play and we see it immediately. And, and you're guided through that experience with other fools, you know, and you're connecting with other fools. So it's, it's just an intimate, glorious experience. Yeah, I love how it connects us, you know, but the, the, your, you being your uh, absolute, celebrating your personal ridiculous, everybody else identifies it with it. And, and even that happens, whether you're in front of thousands of people or whether you're in an online Zoom workshop with 12 other people, it, it really doesn't make a difference. I was so surprised how I felt connected to people. Um, and maybe our, when, we, when we bring everybody or the, our, our friends here um, to participate with us and talk with us, we'll talk about that. But I was so surprised how we bonded. There's yeah. some memories that I'm just like, oh my gosh, that was so powerful. And I feel some people I never met before in real life. Absolutely, absolutely. And just there's such trust, do you know? It, there's such trust in the group. And yeah, it's just a community, right? And, and we experience resilience together we experience empathy together, right? These things just bring us closer. And, and the willingness to, to look stupid, right? Again, I remember in, um, in, I can't remember if it was, oh, it was Yes, Let's. And I think it was Cam and Alberto and Anna and Cam said, let's make our beds. And everyone, yes, let's. And then he immediately regretted it, he shared, because his bed wasn't made and he forgot what a disaster his room was. And Alberto went, oh God, my bedroom's so such a mess. And Anna, I don't know if I want to show it. And they all ran and and they were all pigs. None of them made their bed. <laughs> there was clothes on the floor, whatever, do you know? And they had such a laugh, like, oh, you're not perfect either. Do you know what I mean? It's like, again, there's a different intimacy. You're in my room with me. Do you know what I mean? You see the book I'm reading or, you know, whatever, the dildo under the bed. Oh shit. Do you know what I mean? Kind of thing. So it's again that sense of you're building trust. And when you build trust, you you have a really strong friendship and when you let someone see who you are yeah. right that's yeah. the difference they've seen you look stupid they've seen you at your best they've seen you at your worst so they they completely love you for who you are it's actually um, it's in some ways i found it i've taken millions of clown work not millions, lots of clown workshops over the years this is the, of course the first time i've worked in my own home but um in some ways it's a lot easier to get over myself you know the pretense of standing, I'm or, I've already left the house, so I have a pretense about me. Yeah, 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 exactly. You look I different, you put on that mask. This is Noah driving, this is Noah walking into the studio, yeah. This is what I pro consider professionalism. This is what like <laughs> I consider as like, I'm a student now, I put on the role of a student. Yeah. Uh, but when you're at home, because it's a little out of context, it's just like, oh, what do I do here? And I'm just normally at home. I guess if I were a consummate entertainer at home and I was always bringing people over, there'd be that to get over, but I guess. Yeah, you're already at ease. And I think there's also, um, I'm finding there's already a vulnerability. Like we're all vulnerable right now, right? We're all vulnerable. We're all going through major life changes. Um, and even the check-ins in the studio, it's like, oh, hey, I saw this movie. You should check it out. Well, no one's gone to the movies there. I'm doing a cabaret Friday night. I'm trying out a new bit. Do you want to come? No one's doing that, you know, and, and the check-ins is like, oh, my husband's in the hospital. I haven't seen him in two weeks. Um, I just had a miscarriage. I mean, this is the share, right? So people are vulnerable. So, so in some ways our guards are down. So we're ready. We're ready to play like a child who doesn't care if they fall off the slide or if they wore the right outfit, they're just there to play. There, I feel like this is, there's a question, um, how do you develop the clown within you? And uh, I think it's related to being vulnerable. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's getting out of the way. We all have a clown in us and it's ready to play. Um, you just have to get out of the way, right? So, um, you know, it, it, it's thinking about when you were a kid and you played without fear of failure, without, uh, you know, there, there's instant connections amongst kids. And, and if you didn't have that experience of a child, if you had a shitty childhood, great. Now you can have a great one. You can take a clown workshop, you know, but even my, my kids, you know, if I go to a playground, they'll play with other kids for an hour. Oh, what, what was her name? I don't know. They don't even have the formal introduction of, hi, I'm Shannon. Oh, I'm Noah. Want to play? No, it's just 
instant play, right? That's what we do in class. We just play together. We don't get each other's backgrounds, right? And it's like, again, it, it, your, and your clown is you. It's at your most simplest. It's at your most extreme, your most ridiculous, right? It's, it's your essence of who you truly are. And we, society, because of the constraints of society, we deny ourselves that. We put on the masks. As you say, I'm going to the studio now. I'm a student. I'm prof I want to look professional. I chose what shirt I'm going to wear. Do you know? Um, kids just play. We accept each other. We don't care. Um, oh, is this kid two years older than me? Oh, is this kid black? Oh, is this kid gay? We don't care. We just want to play with this kid. Do you know? And that's clown, right? You just play and you say yes. And there's no headiness. Like, you know, when I go into the playroom, my son says, I broke my leg. Okay. I know I'm the doctor and I'll fix the leg. I'm not thinking, oh, okay. How long have I been, been a doctor? How many years? What happened just before this moment? Did I have an argument with a nurse? Am I having an affair with the receptionist? Um, uh, do I have a drug addiction? No, just fix the fucking leg. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because as I'm in my head thinking about this, he's moved on and found a new doctor to play with who has got her shit together and can just say yes. Do you know what I mean? So that's that's clown. Clowns always know the answer as well. They're problem solvers. So we know the answers, right? We know if we're happy in the relationship. We know if we should leave, but we don't. The clown goes, right? And even, even, even that, to that end, if you are like, you were describing kind of an overthinker of like, should I do this? What's my backstory? Blah, blah, blah. As soon as you may, say that out loud, as soon as you start revealing your truth that you're an overthinker and over consider, considerer, <laughs> that, like, um, that becomes hilarious and wonderful because that's your truth. That's your truth. Exactly. Uh, I say in my workshops, when you come into the class, you should be thinking, A, when you leave, if a casting director was here, I'd have my own series. I was so fucking brilliant. Or B, I was so terrible. As I'm driving home, you're praying for death. Please, God, have a car hit me because I, I cannot show my face again right? That's how you want to live. You want to play and risk big. You don't want to go, oh, yeah, I was okay. I, I had an idea, but I didn't mention it because I wasn't sure. You know what I mean? Like that's no, that's no way to live. And 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 yeah, if you are in your head, stuck in your head, well, that's your clown, right? It that becomes you that you're the overthinker, right? You don't deny that. You you go more. You go big. It's, yeah, for the personal acceptance is incredible. Um, there's a question for me which I haven't read. Um, oh. As a clown performer, how do you create a bond of trust when collaborating with other clowns in a show? What if there are conflicting personalities? There is never conflicting personalities. <laughs> I know, that's the best. I was gonna say, there's always conflict. If, if you're in clown, there's always conflicting personalities. Okay, great. So, so how do you create a bond of trust when collaborating with other clowns in a show, Noah? Well, what we do, what we've done before Clowns After Midnight, the show we've put on a number of times now in different iterations, I, without doing the circle of, commitment beforehand. I just made up that term, but it kind of is of like I've, saying, I've got your back. Um, I'm here to make you look good. Um, just by going and, and checking in with everybody, even if it's somebody I do conflict with and we have different ways of operating, different styles of performing. We have a scene together, like uh, I have to trust. I just have to um, because I know that when I haven't, it is the worst feeling. Yeah. I, I just have to support the other person and and I trust that they'll support me. Yeah. It's just kind of a leap of faith and also kind of an acknowledgement that it'll be terrible if I don't. Yeah, absolutely. It It's total abandonment, mm -hmm. right? And, and having to trust, when I worked at the show uh, a Vivid in Berlin at Friedrich Stadt Palace, and I was building a, a comedy act with my friend, uh, Jimmy and, uh, and Krista Monson. And, and they, they, the suggestion from Berlin was to use the song, I've forgotten it now because I had to block it, but Patrick Swayze from Dirty Dancing. I had the time of my life. That one? That one, not that one. He, he wrote it. Oh gosh, isn't that funny? Um, I have, I've blocked it from my mind. The point is dirty dancing, right? And I'm thinking, okay, just trust. Trust that this person at, at Friedrichstadt Palast, 
trust that they want it to be successful, right? That's a huge thing to set ourselves up for success and to trust the people you're working with want to be successful. And anyways, uh, we, I thought, okay, leap of faith. And when I got to Berlin, I was walking to the palace my first day and at the, um, Madame Tussauds Museum or whatever it is, the Wax Museum, the poster was Patrick Swayze and, and the woman <laughs> from Dirty Dancing. So I was like, oh my God, it's like current. It's, it's the thing, right? And then um, uh, when, when we, Jimmy did the act, um, when that song played, round of applause, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And so it's that thing of just, um, just trust, like you're saying, just trust that you're working with people who want it to work right? Yeah. Nobody wants to, wants it to flop. My scene partner uh, in Verakai uh, said, oh, if we speak a little of the, um, of the language of the city we're in, of the people that we're in, and if you nail it, even if you get really close, the audience will go crazy. And I was like, I don't know. He's like, no, give it a try. And I swear, um, I spoke a little Chinese uh, and the audience went nuts. Right. Um, now I loved it. The artistic director at the time did not love it, but that's another conversation. That's another conversation. <laughs> How does a clown accept notes? Is is, is another conversation. <laughs> um, let's bring in what's that from someone who knows less. <laughs> <laughs> again, let's, total let's, trust and abandonment, right? <laughs> you want to work again, so let's move on. Um, <laughs> so um, let's bring in our our uh, other clowns. Um, who've uh, worked with you, Shannon. Uh, everybody come, come on in, Erica, Marissa, Dasha. Hi, turn, make sure you're unmuted. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Noah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Great, good. <laughs> We're all here, Noah. <laughs> Just realized like, oh yeah, I guess I'm kind of, all right, um, I I'm curious um, if maybe Erica, you can start off talking about um, an experience you had in class that was uh, impactful. Sure. Um, so one of the things that I experienced for my quarantine lockdown pandemic adventure is that I share my house with my partner and he is he was forced to work from home and he has like a pretty serious he makes video games. He's like a production director. It's technical. He's on, you know, big business meetings on Zoom all day, making important decisions. And I am always kind of tiptoeing around. It's like the environment has so much belonged to that space. So I decided to take this class. One of the prerequisites is that you have to be willing to just be completely mad in your own space. You have to make your apologies ahead of time that I will be noisy. I will be causing a scene. And that's just how that's going to be. I felt really like I was going to be like locked down because I have felt like I've needed to make myself small in my space. And the first day, I think one of the first exercises that we did was the three strikes you're out where it's basically, you know, Noah will be like, everybody uh, get a dog or whatever. And you come running back and everybody has to bring either a dog or the closest thing. But next thing you know, I'm like sprinting around my house, just like making a scene and everything is totally hectic. And I felt like it was the first time literally in, in months and months um, since, you know, like, my industry shutting down, blah, blah, blah. Like we'd been through some pretty intense personal loss and all of that, where I was just a hundred percent like living with abandon in my space where it was defined just literally by like being free and light and like the childlike wonder of like, oh, I have to win the frigging toaster game. And like, who cares? Except I cared with my whole heart in that moment. Um, it was really great. It felt in so many ways, like I redefined my relationship to my house, like remembered that this whole part of me exists and doesn't have to be locked down and quiet. Um, and also just like, oh shit, like this is me at full throttle. Like this does still exist. This wasn't lost to the stage. It didn't only belong to the stage. This is mine. This is mine and it can exist in my life wherever I am. Yeah, that's so powerful, I think. Like to be creative in your own space and to go, oh yeah, it's me. <laughs> Do you know what yeah. I mean? It wasn't the company I was working for. It wasn't this particular stage. Like I have, I have the wherewithal in me to create again, right? right. We're all sort of gone to sleep a little bit, I think, right? So yes. that's fantastic that it's like, oh, I can do this. I, I, oh, there are resources still open. I'm the resources, you know? And I find like 
there was a beautiful thing. I worked for Cirque du Soleil for a long time as well. And so we have a shared community where like clowns are a normal thing and like being, being that person is a normal thing. But then when I go work in other productions that aren't so circus based, that are more theater, blah, blah, blah. There'll often be a time during production, like late at night where I start to get like weird and I'm like, let's climb over the rails and do whatever thing. And like that part of my personality comes out. And it seems like almost everybody around me will start making excuses for it. Like, oh, I guess we've gotten pretty punchy. You're like, wow, we must be really sleep deprived. And just remembering that sometimes in the rest of the world, that part of us feels like it doesn't have permission to exist. And it just was super cool every time that I get an opportunity to play in Shannon land, um, in clown class, just to remember that there is actually an entire world where that thing about me is actually wonderful and it's positive and it's something about me that can be embraced and not excused. Absolutely. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. How about you, Dasha? I'm good. Um, yeah, I just uh, want to say uh, I actually took Shannon's clown classes before the pandemic and all that craziness was happening and on Zoom. So it's like I have two experiences of it. S same uh, clown class, same games, but in completely different dimension. And I think it was just like a wonderful experience to experience like Zoom and the screen, you know, like you in this like little window and you have another 11 people in the same window. So I think you have to concentrate and be even more aware than when you're in the room with people. So that was very interesting. And I think where our industry is going, where like Zoom shows now exist, you know, and just in general, like how you audition or how you do, I don't know, you interact with your kids maybe because whatever, they far away and they can come over or something. It's like, I think it's a, it's a very positive way of using the devices that we just left with and the situation and the, the most positive impact. And yeah, it was just very fun to just play, like just be as a kid. Um, I watched Hook another night you remember this old movie yeah. and I cried from joy and just like how sweet it is and how like it's such a good movie and I think it's that exact message that we learn in class with Shannon on Zoom that just play and have happy thoughts and there was like it was a scene with no food you remember like I don't know it's just, just imagine there's food and when you actually do and just go with the game the life is just so much better and you just feel great. So that, that, that was my experience and it was super fun to play with everybody. Awesome. I remember uh, there was a part, you were talking about uh, using the camera to create specific angles. And I remember this part where uh, we were all talking and your part in talking was speaking through a didgeridoo. <laughs> And you were sitting on the ground and the didgeridoo was extended. So you really could just only see the didgeridoo and then your feet. Yes. And it was just like, you could never really do that in a live setting. Yeah. And you're using the camera like you would use like for film or for TV. Like it really becomes a different way of telling your personal story. And after a while, we all started doing that. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And how, yeah, how can we make this box work for us? Yeah. We don't have to fight against it. Do you know what I mean? We can really embrace it and see the possibility. Yeah, and it definitely gives you so many more options like than you could probably would be impossible to do in live theater or in the room with other people. So it, it kind of makes your brain find like the solutions. And I think that's the clown thing that like you find the solutions with the situation like it can be like completely disaster, but you are like, oh, well, I have a thought. Like, you know, like I think it's, also make your brain work like kind of yeah. you know like you like okay like what are I gonna do what are I gonna do you got so I think it's very positive especially we're now stuck with Netflix and like YouTube <laughs> kind of thing and you're just like okay I don't know what to do it helps to be productive and being energized Absolutely. and inspired too yeah definitely I remember Marissa we had a pretty serious scene I think and yeah, it turned pretty serious out of nowhere. Um, but it was it was quite, you know, it, this just so everyone has the context, our scene was um, 
it was it a word it was just playing with each other trying to fall in love with each falling in love with each other yeah and we were so we we're falling in love and you know we're playing off of each other you know and you're also with the constraints of you know you might not hear what they're saying so you're like trying to listen but you're also trying to offer gifts to them as well as make sure you're honoring the gifts they give to you and you know as we're falling in love you know i think one of us coughed and then it turned into do you have covid and then it became that like pseudo uh like you know that talk you kind of have and be like you know like in a relationship later on down the line of are you seeing other people you know do you do you need to get tested for things you know just like that under like you know it was a whole other story being told it was being told through you know through talking about do you have COVID you know when's the last time you got tested you know do you know do I need to get tested you know and it's just it's just this surreal hilarious moment and then you know we we got so aggravated with each other you know it just ended you know and so it's it it was it was a lot of fun to just like see how what all the underlying things are and all the um the stereotypical things we were saying that would happen in that situation but it worked for our situation yeah Yeah, absolutely and just the just the falling in love like you're saying like having really listened to what they're saying it's like you know two people totally in love they might not be listening right they're they're, they're (laughs) their own experience oh he loves me so much what'd you say (laughs) you know what I mean (laughs) So it is, it's ridiculous, but it's absolutely the truth, you know? And then that thing where you, well, you were madly in love and then someone coughs and then we are back to the reality of today, right? Like, yeah. you know, kids get invited to go somewhere and it's, it's an epic decision, right? Like, is it safe for them to go? How many kids are going to be there? Is it outside? Is that family wearing masks, right? right? And, and, and so we weren't thinking that, but just you reacting to this cough based on what's happening in the world. We were all like, oh no, right? We knew it was going to end. <laughs> we knew the relationship was going to fall apart. So it, it, it's quite lovely. And yeah, and that's just, you know, being present and, and none of it's planned, right? Yeah. I had a uh, rather therapeutic moment when we all had class together. Uh, While we were taking the class, I was, I, you know, I also work in the theater industry, which means I have no job. And uh, so I tried to get one and I got a a job in the service industry for a short period of time, which I was doing while um, I was taking class with Shannon. And I just felt like I was putting myself and my family at risk because not everyone was adhering to the mask rules. And, you know, and, And so like, I would come home and I'd be really anxious. And one day I was put in a situation where I was seriously contemplating quitting slash I ended up getting fired because I was contemplating quitting and it all worked out. (laughs) So we, uh, we had this moment where uh, we were doing this laughing exercise where you have to, you know, you have to laugh and you have to sustain it. And you're kind of, you know, you have to tell, you want to tell a joke, but you can't, you want to tell what the funny thing is and you can't get it out. And the situation that had happened to me hours before of me in the process of getting fired from this service industry job just was, I, you know, it was so unfathomable to explain. And I'm like, Oh, I know exactly. And, you know, I'm laughing and I'm laughing. I can't tell you guys because that's, you know, that's the point you're laughing so hard that you can't get the words out. And then it just like overcomes with sadness because I'm just like, Oh, but I actually did get fired, you know, but it's this beautiful thing because they don't know what's happening. You know, like they just know that there's this like, it's like this emotional, like you're laughing, you're laughing, you're laughing, and then you're crying and, you know, you can't, you still can't explain why you're crying, but then it turns into laughter again because you're crying and, you know, so, and what's beautiful is that, you know, you're so in Shannon's class, you're so, you know, you trust everyone, you know, you have a really, you have a strong bond with your entire class, you know, you, 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 Shannon sets up a great place for you to be vulnerable. Yeah. So. Thank you, Marissa. That, that's where the clown lives between laughter and crying, right? So, you know, if you do an exercise when we do laugh, cry in the studio, you know, if you close your eyes, sometimes you don't know 
where are they? Are they laughing? Are they crying? So yeah. just having that, again, that joy to allow that emotion out that now you're laughing so hard, you're crying. <laughs> and that happens in life too, all the time where we'll just, you know, especially in quarantine, I've found I'll wake up one day and I'm sad. Nothing's happened right now. I have like a self check-in. Why are you sad? I don't know. Okay. Go with it. You're sad today. <laughs> you know what I mean? Enjoy being sad because there's no explanation. So it's in life too. Sometimes we're crying. We don't know what's wrong. Sometimes we're laughing in hysterics and you're laughing at the sound of someone else's laugh. You don't remember the joke they told. Ridiculous. You're laughing at them, right? I had so one thing uh, to add, if that's okay. That when she's talking about sort of that bond and that sense of trusting everybody, it was really interesting um, doing this experience on Zoom and we had a dozen people in the class and several of them I knew at least casually socially and then the rest were total strangers and I probably may not have a chance to meet in real life. Um, but it's amazing like the depth of what sense of a bond you end up feeling like you have with people. And when I think about like regular life and the fact that when we think about the people that we're like, oh my God, they were really there for us. Like it's really, it's really when we're thinking through times of uncertainty, right? That like, when we don't know what's going on in our life, something bad happens, somebody might be in the hospital. We don't know what the outcome's going to be. And it's the person that sits with us. And it's like this microcosm where all of a sudden, like over this digital technology, we're in a situation where Shannon's creating environment where everything is uncertain. Like, I don't know what's going to come next in the scene. I don't know what she's going to ask for, but like here Noah and I are, and we're going to go through this uncertainty together. And as a result of it, it's like, I just have like the most intense sense of like warmth and community. And like, I would leave, I would leave feeling like I had just shared this like deep experience with people, which is so gratifying, especially right now. I think it is always that, that experience, but so gratifying in a situation where we don't get to be connected. Um, and my expectation coming into this class was more that, you know, we'd be our 12 little squares and you'd sit kind of bored because I've tried taking a couple of other online workshops that were a little bit difficult to focus because we were we were so sedentary and it felt really difficult to connect through the screen. But like in this situation, we would move into breakout rooms and stuff. And I think it could be cool to talk about how you've used the technology of Zoom to like break it down to make it feel like you're actively in the community. And how we were always so active too. And yeah. Rarely a moment, if any, and you would usually call us out if we were sitting down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I would like to add what Erica said. Um, yeah, I think just the exercises and um, the break rooms as well, like the games, and also someone actually asking, like, how was your day? Like, it was something, oh, like your week. I was like, oh, <laughs> like they really want to hear so what's happened. So I think that kind of creates like, okay, so now I'm going to tell that crazy story that happened to me or like a great story. And that what Erica mentioned about the breakout rooms, like when we would be in the groups and the game called Let's, Let's, Yes? Uh, yes, no. yes, Let's. Yes, Let's. And I think how wonderful, you know, like you can say whatever crazy thing you want to say and people going to respond. Yes, let's. And you're like, oh my gosh, really? Okay, let's do it. You know, and I had a moment when it was um, run to your mailbox and check your mail or something. So it's me running with my laptop outside my neighbor sitting in the front porch. And I'm just like in my pajama with my laptop also screaming something. And I was like, hey. So I mean, like, it's so ridiculous. But at the same time, you're like, you know, when you eight or like, Five, you don't care what the neighbor's gonna think so like screw it so I think it's a joy in that and that's one of the reasons why we just bond together and you just trust because they're gonna say yes let's so I think that's one of the keys yeah and also they're going with you to the mailbox <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Experience. And yes, let's in the studio. I've, I've never been a fan of yes, let's, but it's great. It gets us saying yes. But in your house, it's so great. Let's vacuum. Yes, let's, right? Let's make a cocktail. Yes, let's, right? I was like, take advantage of this time. Um, and the breakout rooms, I mean, for me, Zoom fatigue is real, right? I've got kids that are, in, my son is incredibly active. You know, he's on one of these balls that you use for Pilates or something. And he, this is him the whole time he's in school because <laughs> he needs to move, right? And so I just, uh, you know, I'm trying to be sensitive to when it's not that you're not engaging, you're just sort of, it's this Zoom fatigue. So the breakout rooms and the physicality keeps us active, right? Um, 
And when you're in your body, when you're moving, you're out of your head, right? So again, you're following the impulse instead of going, oh, what, what would be clever to do, right? What would get a laugh, right? You just play the truth and that's always the most funny. Um, and just the uncertainty, Erica, right? That, that this uncertain time, again, take a clown workshop because that's where clowns live all the time. And yeah. the difference is we admit we don't know. And we with joy, know. like, okay. Yeah. And you walk away a little bit with a little more of a sense or a reminder, just if you haven't been exercising it, that like, you can trust yourself. You can trust this brain of yours that it will make decisions in a moment, even when you are uncertain, um, because that's exactly what clowning is. Yeah. And just that sensibility of, um, I mean, we're all, it, it's always uncertain. It's just more extreme now. It's in our faces, do you know? Yeah. And I think, how do you survive you? curiosity, imagination, connection. I know when uh, my mother has a brain disease, she, she has Lewy body dementia, so, so her brain is dying. And um, she, we moved her to assisted living. And I had lunch with two other ladies, you know, and uh, they, the, someone comes and takes your order for lunch and um, they brought us our lunches. And my, you know, Ethel says to Myrtle, you know, what kind of potatoes are these? And Ethel says, oh, they're garlic mashed potatoes. And, uh, and she says, oh, I don't taste the garlic. And she said, and she responds, no, you have to use your imagination. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> I'm sitting at a table with ladies in their nineties and my sweet mom, who's, you know, in her seventies, but her brain is dying, having to use her fucking imagination that these potatoes taste wonderful when she'd rather be eating anywhere else right now right and and ethel's saying yeah when, after you hit 70 for some reason they they think you you don't have taste buds do you know what i mean and so it's the same thing when you're in elementary school right when you play you you use your imagination you play now how do you survive you use your imagination and you have a laugh at the truth which is put some fucking garlic in these potatoes you know what i mean i'm 90 years old and i know what the fuck garlic tastes like do you know where's my fucking garlic so again it's just and it's communal we you know she speaks the truth we all have a laugh all right and go yeah right you know and no one touched their potatoes in the entire dining hall it's not what they ordered <laughs> you know so it's just you know, having that sense of freedom that I'm in a shitty situation maybe, and we're all going through this differently. Um, but how can I find joy in this moment? How can I enjoy being in my home? Um, how can I enjoy connecting with other human beings? Even when we, you know, well, there was one time where, uh, you know, we all just went to bed, right? It's like, you don't feel like getting out of bed today. You don't have to. Now you can be in your bed with 12 other fools who also would rather just be in their pajamas. <laughs> Do you know? So it's just accepting uh, the truth and, and making it wonderful, right? And if it's terrible, great. We're in it together. 100%. Yeah, I wanted to, um, in terms of the breakout rooms and connecting, um, there, what I found fascinating about Yes Let's is, you know, we'd all come back super energized from working with three, four people, you know, when we break out. And what was fascinating is the ensemble mind, is that every group, no one did the same thing. Like, in every group, like, you would find the thing that, like, just kind of spoke to the three of you and went with it. So like, I remember there was a specific day where like the group I was with, we were like low energy. We were kind of calm. I think Dasha, you might've been with me and we were just, we were making tea. We were cutting our vegetables. We were, you know, we went and brushed our teeth. Like it was just very, very like calm and simple. And, you know, and then, you know, we come back into the main group with everyone and this other group is like, oh my God, we were like screaming at each other and just like, you know, and doing jumping jacks. And we're just like, whoa, like that is not what I wanted to do today. Like, I'm very grateful for my group right now, you know? And it just, you know, four minutes in a breakout group of three, four people, you know, and it was, and, but. It, even though ours was lower energy, I was like, I felt very centered, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, and that's just it. It's the group mind, right? And so, yeah, one, can, one group can be wild and crazy and the other one can be, okay, we're just chilling. But it's that you're doing it together, right? That there's a connection, that you're not denying anyone the experience, right? It's like, we're gonna chop cucumbers. And even that, right, we're all alone. Like that's something I've learned. It's, it's, 
it's a different time to be a teacher. Do you know what I mean? Like there, it, it's a reality check for me that I might be the first person you've seen all week. Do you know what I mean? And, and this game three strikes you out when I first did it, you know, um, you know, uh, in my house, I have a person. And so you see right away, this person has their grandfather who, who looks like he died last week. Do you know what I mean? So you think, okay, she's taking care of this man. And yes. I her, her life in COVID, right? And this person comes with their partner and this person comes alone. So again, without talking, you see people's experience. And so just, just having that sensibility to be together that, yeah, we're, all we're doing is making a cup of tea, but this might be the first cup of tea you've shared with someone in 10 months right and just the joy in that that it doesn't have to be oh my god i was brilliant today you should have seen me it's like i got to have a cup of tea with three other idiots and it was glorious <laughs> do you know what i mean again just that connection in this environment through play through play 100 percent. wonderful well what do you think noah that was wonderful we're coming up on an hour i feel like that was really an awesome conversation Thanks, you guys, so much for joining us. Thank you, Noah. Thank, thank you, you Marissa, Dasha. Hello, Darren Patura. Hello. Yes, thank you very much, Noah, Shannon, Erica, Marissa, and Dasha for uh, being here with us for the benefits of Clown and Play. And thank you, everybody out there that uh, watched us here today out in uh, the world of Facebook and uh, YouTube and Twitter or wherever. And thank you for participating in the chat. Uh, we really, uh, we really enjoyed seeing all of you. Well, not really seeing all of you, but seeing that you're out there uh, and enjoying this experience with us. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed yourself. And uh, we have virtual playground coming up in March, Saturdays, 1030 till one o'clock Pacific time, uh, every Saturday in March. You can go to vegastheaterhub.com uh, for information about that. We have a few spots available. Uh, it starts in just less than two weeks. So make sure you uh, you go ahead and get in there uh, as soon as you can. Thank you again so much, everybody for watching. And we will let you know if we are doing something like this again, let us know your thoughts. Uh, we'd love to have more talks like this, more discussions uh, with uh, the community. So thank you very much, everybody. And we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Oh. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>